What a bonkers week. As a major US bank collapses, provoking fears of another credit crunch, as Brits struggle with a cost of living crisis with inflation through the roof, with a pivotal budget coming up this week, which will seal the fate of the economy for the next few years, and with a war continuing to rage in the East, having an ongoing impact on Western energy supplies, we're talking about ex-footballer and crisp salesman Gary Lineker. He's had his chips. Now, at first glance, it's a trivial story. But in reality, it's anything but. Because it has revealed how fractured the national conversation is on so many issues. And it's a drama which has severely tested the reputation of our state broadcaster, the BBC. Why? Well, for all of its strengths and weaknesses, and I think there are plenty of great radio and TV programmes that it produces, the foundation of the BBC must be impartiality. The Beeb, like Marks and Spencer, Costa Coffee and British Gas, must be a service for all. We can debate the rights and wrongs of Rishi Sunak's migrant policy, but for one of the organisation's biggest stars to create this incredible political row has created a nightmare and a headache and an existential crisis for his employer, the Beeb. And I'm not sure that helps anyone, given the fact that the BBC's revered global footprint and its outstanding legacy of television, radio, online output and film production is peerless. A talented guy, though he is, ratings for Match of the Day actually soared by half a million last night. And the brilliant Patrick Christie's and myself nicked a good few thousand viewers off him as well. Patrick, the team and I put the programme together in an afternoon. It was the alternative match of the day and it was made on a budget of 11p. Here are some <clears throat> highlights. Good evening, it's 10 o'clock and tonight we make history. This is the alternative match of the day live on GB News with me, Mark Dolan and Patrick Christie's. Patrick, go easy on those crisps. Oh, Ahead tonight, 60 minutes of the best football reaction and the finest analysis from our top commentary team. Uh, Eamon, first of all, we're making TV and radio history. It is the alternative match of the day. Your reaction as a broadcasting legend. Aye. Well, aye. Well, keep, keep at it, lads. Yeah, keep at it. Keep at it. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, it does appear now that this thing is working. No, it's not. Good stuff. OK, well, I will tell you. Leicester versus Patrick, Chelsea. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic. Yes, it's back. Beautiful. I'll see you at the BAFTAs. Let me put it to you straight. I think Gary Lineker is a preening narcissist whose political pronouncements exist only to signal what a lovely guy he is. Except that his participation in the World Cup in Qatar at Stadia, built by slaves, 6,000 of whom died in the 40-degree heat, and his battle with HMRC to get his tax bill down by millions of pounds sends quite a different message. And I don't think that Lineker gives two figs about the BBC, which is why he has time and again flouted their very important impartiality guidelines. You just can't force people to pay a public tax, which is what the licence fee is, for presenters on the public payroll to then wag their fingers, take sides on a complex and divisive issue like migration and effectively demonise half the population who want something done as a bunch of heartless racists. It's my view that we must accept people who need refuge. We always have, and we should have a healthy debate about how many. But also in my view, the illegal crossings are a humanitarian, economic and national security disaster, which cost lives, impact local communities, and enrich unscrupulous international criminals. A knee-jerk reaction and an impulse to do the right thing and be nice in relation to the migrant crisis is really tipping your hat to the idea of an open borders policy, with no thought of the long-term consequences, particularly in relation to infrastructure, housing, school places and an NHS already on its knees. In the end, democracy will save us and this difficult issue will be settled at the next election when Sunak goes to the country. 
Now, Gary Lineker has his supporters, but history is a harsh teach teacher. And the clamour to do the right thing and be nice during the pandemic saw the country locked down on and off for two and a half years as we paid perfectly healthy people to stay at home, wrecking the economy, borrowing half a trillion pounds and cranking up the national debt to 2.1 trillion. In my view, people were needlessly locked down, masked and subjected to vaccine tyranny, all in the name of doing the right thing and being nice. Wrecking the economy doesn't feel like the right thing now, does it? And a waiting list of 7 million people in the NHS isn't very nice, is it? On the national radio and television airwaves, I pushed back on what I considered a damaging and hysterical reaction to a potentially dangerous but largely mild seasonal respiratory virus. Well, we're seeing the same emotive clamour now in relation to the migrant crisis. Again, virtue signalling media types and politicians screaming their heads off for a more relaxed border policy, which would have serious implications for this country in the years ahead. Fair play to old Gary Lineker, though. He has at least got us having this important national conversation. But it's one that should be had on this programme and programmes like Question Time, not Match of the Day. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. Many would argue that Gary Lineker has been consistent in his humanitarian views. He has taken in refugees and uses his platform to give a voice to those who have none. In the course of this tumultuous week, he has enjoyed a massive outpouring of public support, as well as from his colleagues um, and the public. Uh, there are plenty of top lawyers also who argue that the new migrant plan is cruel, illegal, unworkable and morally wrong. Uh, so what's your view? Mark at GBNews.UK. 